Good, Good Friday morning. It is 8.30. A welcome in to the, uh, the 8.30 half hour of Queen City News. I'm Jason Harper. And I'm Will Lewis. Helene is bringing some of its strongest impacts to the Charlotte area as we speak. And we've got uh, coverage this morning from two meteorologists. We've got Andrew Brightman and Brandon Lawson in our studio today because there's so much to cover. Andrew, you've got a silver lining. And I was surprised to see the track kind of make a little closer path towards the Charlotte area. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jason. We're seeing the center of circulation basically go over the western portions of Asheville this morning. Here, we were expecting a turn off to the north northwest. Just something didn't didn't for the most part really materialize as we went through the morning hours. And just putting this radar into motion over the past six hours, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about here. There's the center of Helene. We kept on waiting for this turn off to the north and west. That was going to increase the tornado potential across the Carolinas, but maybe would have kept some of the stronger winds and also maybe some of the heaviest rain farther off to our west. But you'll notice here, kind of draw a little line. For the most part, we saw this storm just continuing on this heading to the north and north northeast directly into western portions of North Carolina. And this is why we've been seeing the rain, the wind this morning, zooming in back here across the Carolinas. One thing I do want to point out, we talked about the worst impacts between six and eight o'clock this morning. I do want to highlight right here this band. Once it gets north of you, the threat of severe weather really begins to wrap up from the Carolinas. We see greatly improving weather here once we get past that band off to our north and improving conditions for the region. But up in the mountains, you are still seeing the heaviest rain. You see here highlighted in the blue, this is the flash flood emergency that we've been seeing. Brandon, meteorologist Brandon Lawson has been talking about. We still have to get all of this moisture to lift up through portions of the foothills and mountains before we see the conditions begin to improve. But I do want to highlight again, once this band right here lifts to your north, we're going to see conditions improve and it eliminates essentially the tornado threat we've been concerned with. Still got the tornado watches that go in effect here until about 6 o'clock this evening, but we're going to see conditions slowly start to improve here in Charlotte, but really concerned up in the mountains. And for the latest updates, right at your fingertips here, you want to make sure you download our Pinpoint Weather Alert app. We'll give you the latest on what you need to know as these storms and winds are pushing through the Carolinas and we continue to see those power outages start to rise. Brandon, along with the water levels. Yeah, these water levels really coming up this morning. Again, we're continuing to follow horrific flooding of the mountains this morning. I, again, with all these flash flood emergencies issued, I just kind of want to give you kind of a definition of what that means. The National Weather Service only issues flash flood emergencies when there's a severe threat to life and catastrophic damage. So if you get a flash flood emergency this morning, especially you in the high country that are already dealing with numerous of these, you want to make sure you're seeking higher ground and you want to follow evacuation orders from those local officials in your county. They know what they're doing. They again, they train for stuff like this. If local officials are telling you to evacuate, you've got to get out because you don't want to put first off yourself in danger, but you don't want to put those first responders in danger too. They have to go into some of those high water uh, situations and do those swift water rescues. Those are very tough situations and those currents can be very fast. Again, we do have several uh, flash flood emergencies in the mountains, but want to look at some of the river levels right now as you're getting up close Closer to Boone as we get towards Boone there you can start seeing some action stage levels starting to pop up. So we're getting close to flood stage with the South Fork New River at US Highway 221. That's when we expect to get close to major flood stage due to the high water concerns we're seeing there. Also the Watagua uh, River near Sugar Grove already approaching moderate flood stage this morning, possibly up to major later today. And then we also have the concern at the, for the new river near South Fork, uh, just towards Jefferson there. We're looking at 11 feet right now, possibly close to moderate flood stage there as well. So we're going to see these river levels continue to rise. And here's the thing. River levels are rising now, but even after the rain moves out, we're still going to see these river levels rise through the afternoon, likely into the weekend as well, because you've got the smaller creeks, rivers and streams that are again flowing into those bigger rivers continuing that rise. So that's something we'll continue to track not only through the day today, but I think through the weekend we'll still have some high water issues up in the high country. Will Jason. All right, uh, Brandon, Andrew, guys, thank you so much. Uh, let's get a look at your pinpoint traffic, a mess. I mean, you just heard Andrew uh, and Brandon talk about uh, the issues happening in the mountain areas. Look at this. You can barely even see the 485 loop around the heart of the Queen City because all of those yellow caution diamonds have to do with road, either blockages, closures of some type, whether it's flooding, uh, debris, limbs down, power lines down, and it goes, it spans all the way out west 
from Gaston County all the way east towards Albemarle, north and south. It's all over the place. And so we've been hearing a lot this morning about Mountain Island Lake. That is this lake that's right here. There are multiple road closures on secondary roads like this one here off Egypt Road all the way across Mount Holly Huntersville Road. Uh, part of that has been closed. Beatty's Ford Road runs from the county line. Beatty's Ford runs from up here in Huntersville all the way down to the west of I-77. There are four road closures along Beatty's Ford Road because of flooding and trees that are down. But as I uh, back up out of the, uh, the area there, again, there must be 30 different incidents around the Queen City. We've got uh, Mount Holly Huntersville Road closed, 700 block of Eastway Drive, North Tron at 16th, Queens Road at Providence Road. Uh, we had folks this morning that say, listen, if the power is out and the traffic light is not working, treat the intersection as a four way stop. The person on your right typically goes first, so be respectful. Don't go. Don't force it or lay on your horn. Will, you're finding out more as well. Yeah, and Medic uh, is tweeting out, they are keeping us updated on the number of accidents that they have been responsible to at midnight there was only well right now since midnight there's 14 accidents 12 was as, as of 7 30 but just think in the last hour they tweeted out they've only responded to two more accidents so people are listening they're staying at home they're avoiding getting out on the roadways so that emergency crews can get to some of these closures these traffic signal malfunctions and everything else going on but the roads are still getting bad out there Let's go ahead. I want to take you out live to Cramerton. We have photojournalist Corey Epps out in Cramerton. This is 8th Avenue. As we pull out there, you can see he's standing on the roadway. But look at all that water coming through over there. And that is what we are worried about right now as those floodwaters continue to increase. Of course, we are monitoring this as it goes on. We also have crews out in the area taking a look at conditions, talking about that thousands of outages, trees down, homes damaged in Charlotte due to Helene. Queen City News reporter Savannah Rudisell has been moving around this morning following the following the different uh, uh, areas of destruction that we've seen around the Queen City. Now you're on Heart Drive. Savannah, what are you finding out there? Yeah, so we are we are still uh, near the Mountain Island Lake area, probably just about a block or so from where we last checked in with you maybe 30 minutes ago. And since then, two trees have fallen. We were helping some of the neighbors who are still here uh, despite the mandatory evacuation order. They started chopping down some of the smaller trees, clearing those from the road. We had to help them move that just to get where we are here. We were trying to get to another location to show you how much the lake has risen, but we can't get there because we have this tree that fell probably just within the last 20 minutes or so, and it went uh, from one side of River Haven Drive all the way to yeah. the other. Now, this tree was so tall that it hit the top of this power line right here. So it broke some other trees on this side of the road as well as some of these top branches took it down with it. Now where the danger is right now is it hit those power lines and they are now scooped down here into uh, this is a small little ravine right here. And it is we have power lines in water sitting down there right now. And then I just talked to an individual who lives maybe maybe two houses down right here. He said that he does not have any more power that went out a while ago. So he was just looking to go get some breakfast. But now he says it's too late because again, this has just fallen. Once again, near on this River Haven Drive area, there are certain roads that are more low lying than others around the Mountain Island Lake area that are under mandatory evacuation orders because now they're either stuck at home or, or stuck gone. So we're going to uh, stay right here. Uh, likely not in this exact location. We are hearing trees cracking and, and limbs kind of threatening to fall. So we're going to make sure we're in a safe location, but continue to bring you the latest information here in Northwest Charlotte. Reporting live, Savannah Rudisell, Queen City News.